Hey guys, we're back with video 19 of the series. Today we are looking at Wisdom Tree's US Quality Dividend Growth ETF. What we do in this series is we try to determine how much of these ETFs we need to own or how much of the ETF we need to own to hit $1,000 a month. Where today we are looking at just DGRW. In the past, we've looked at these 18 ETFs and later on we're going to go ahead and take a look at these etfs so what are we actually doing in this series well over here we take one etf go over to the website and try to determine what they are doing to actually pay us a dividend payout or how they are paying us a dividend yield then we go over to seeking alpha and try to determine what their dividend yield number would be and do recall that the dividend yield is going to fluctuate on a daily basis because of the market price but simply we want to choose a dividend yield that we are comfortable with to be able to determine or project how much of the etf we need to own to hit that one thousand dollars a month over on our compound interest analysis calculator now we're only going to look at a few boxes on this spreadsheet so i will walk it through you once we get to it once we finish that we finish up with portfolio visualizer and compare today's etf with the s p 500 index today we're looking at dgrw it is wisdom trees u.s quality dividend growth ETF. Well, what does that mean? Well, they seek to track the investment results of dividend paying large cap companies, meaning companies that have a $10 billion market capitalization with growth characteristics in the US equity market. So what is actually in DGRW? Well, you're, you will see some very common holdings in DGRW. This is Seeking Alpha's holdings page. You can see they are invested in all 11 sectors, but the top four sectors seem to be weighted the most. Adding all the top four sectors up, you're close to about 80% weight for the entire ETF. Coming down here, they have a total of about 297 holdings with the top 10 holdings being as seen on the screen here. And it's I do find this kind of odd that they have these two tech companies, these two growth tech companies, uh, Apple and Microsoft. But actually, believe it or not, Apple has grown their dividend for about 10 years in a row. And Microsoft has grown their dividend for about 18 years in a row. Taking a look at Apple's dividend yield page, in Seeking Alpha, the dividends and subtab dividend history, you can see at the max view started to pay their dividend August 2012. So they just hit that 10 year growth figure. And it looks like every four quarters they pay the same dividend. And then the next quarter they increase the dividend. And it looks like they've been doing that for about 10 years straight. Same thing for Microsoft, MSFT over on the dividends subtab dividend history. Taking a look at the 10 year close. Uh, zoomed in version you can see again four quarters of the same dividend and then they increase their dividend take a look at the max view and just as they were starting to establish their dividend it looks like february of 2005 they have continued to grow it since then coming back to over to dgrw's seeking alpha page click that dividends tab and dividend history and it looks like they pay the, the dividend actually on a monthly basis. So there's a lot more things to look at here. And it looks like it is pretty erratic, but they do have, uh, looks like they are going from left to right. That is trending upwards overall, if you were to average these numbers out. Let's take a look at their daily dividend yield chart. And it looks like that if we go back five years, uh, the dividend has fluctuated quite uh, significantly, but over the course of the last two years, it's ranged anywhere down to 1.76 or so, all the way up to about a 2.17. So let's take a look of at or choose the number 2%. I, I do believe we'd feel comfortable comfortable using that 2% figure for DGR. W. Coming back over to our compound interest analysis calculator, we'll go ahead and put in that 2% figure. We'll leave the expense ratio blank and we won't use that for this video. And you can play around with the growth and contribution numbers that will change your portfolio value and your income values. But for the purposes of this video, we are just looking at this currently. Dividends per month for, for the amount of the security in question and the security in question is DGRW. 
you would need $600,000 worth of GGRW to hit that $1,000 a month. So that is the uh, answer to the question of the video, $600,000 worth of DGRW to hit that $1,000 a month. Coming over to Portfolio Visualizer and comparing Wisdom Tree's US Quality Dividend Growth ETF, DGRW, versus SPY, an S&P 500 ETF. If you started with $500,000 of each, your ending balance would have DGRW at about 1.4 million if you started with half a million around May 2013, which is when the inception date of DGRW was. So that gives us about a 12.19% CAGR number since May 2013 and 12.09% for SPY starting into May 2013. Coming down to the annual or portfolio incomes, in the blue is DGRW. It looks like the SPY and DGRW are fairly close in their dividend payouts with the past few years having DGRW paying slightly more in dividends over the past five years. So that is it for today's video for DGRW. Let me know what you thought of this video and head down to the comments and suggest an ETF that you would like to see analyzed in this way. And with that, thanks for watching.